What is going on guys, it's CG here and welcome back to another Ark Survival Evolved update video. So patch 252 is scheduled to be released on the 23rd of November. However, we all know what the Ark devs are like, so the release date can easily be changed. Looking into the patch notes, we can already expect to see a whole bunch of new mechanics, dinos, dino whistle improvements, and a whole lot more. Just like last year, we can expect to see the Turkey Trial event, with new challenges, cosmetics and earnable emotes. This system also enables mods to add more emotes to the game. Taking a look at the dinos. First up we have the Akatina. The Akatina, or easily known as a giant snail, is a passive herbivore that was around during the Holocene period. Found mostly in the marshes and jungles, the Akatina is a very slow, very non-threatening large mollusk. It might be the safest creature on the island to hunt, and while it only provides a small amount of meat and chitin, an easy meal is always good on the island. Unlike nearly every other creature on the island, Akatina does not defecate normally. Instead it leaves a thick sticky substance. It leaves trails of this slime, but the trails are so thin that they crumble to dust quickly. Once tamed, the Akatina is seen as very useful. Its secretions are chemically similar to the cementing paste used by many tribes for building materials. Once tamed, the Akatina builds up the slime over time, which can then be collected at the tribe's convenience. The Megalosaurus The Megalosaurus is an aggressive nocturnal carnivore that was around during the mid-Jurassic period. Much like the islands of the large theropods, Megalosaurus is an aggressive carnivore that should not be taken lightly. Unlike most of the other theropods, it is primarily a nocturnal creature. As dawn approaches, the Megalosaurus starts looking for a secluded place to spend the day in relative safety. If disturbed during the day, the Megalosaurus becomes significantly more sluggish. Its primary combat tactic is to bite onto its target, then lock its jaw shut in an iron strength grip. Only larger creatures can hope to break free once the Megalosaurus locks its jaw. The creature then proceeds to gnaw on its prey until death. The Megalosaurus may not be the most powerful theropod, however it is still highly sought after by night raiders. Due to its nocturnal nature, the Megalosaurus becomes much more formidable at night, dodging attacks, conserving stamina, and attacking more accurately. However, these are only few of its enhanced talents. The Pachyrhinosaurus The Pachyrhinosaurus is an invasive herbivore that was around during the late Cretaceous period. Pachyrhinosaurus is a medium-sized herbivore that can be found almost everywhere but the island's mountains. It is generally calm and ignores all other nearby creatures, unless it is attacked, at which point it usually tries to flee. Pachyrhinosaurus may possess among the most unique survival skills. When threatened, its massive nasal boss releases a chemical into the air that calms other nearby creatures, making them less likely to attack. Affected creatures are sometimes hungry enough to ignore the effect, and humans seem to be immune to it. Conversely, it can seemingly invert this phenomenon at will and induce creatures to become more aggressive towards it. Pachyrhinosaurus is an excellent starting mount. It is fairly easy to train, can carry enough to be a simple pack animal, and is not as deadly as some of the larger herbivores. Additionally, the Pachyrhinosaurus can release its unique chemical on command to protect itself and its rider from nearby predators, or draw attention if desired making it a potential lifesaver in no time at all. And finally, we have the Moshops. The Moshops is a cowardly omnivore that was around during the mid-Permian period. As a lethargic, cowardly creature, Moshops primarily lives in the forests of the island, primarily making its home among the Great Redwoods. It survives by being extremely flexible in its eating habits and completely averse to fighting. It never starves, since it can eat just about anything. Moshops runs at the slightest provocation, but is still highly preyed upon. What makes Moshops particularly interesting is what it can be trained to do with its eating habits. With a versatile palate and tough teeth, Moshops can be tamed for a unique utility. Over time it can be taught exactly what things to gnaw, increasing the likelihood of harvesting that exact resource which its master desires. For example, Teach it to prioritise chewing prime meat, and prime meat will be easy to harvest from the flesh it consumes. Likewise for rare plants, and so forth. Just don't expect the moshops to protect you though, even after taming it will quickly flee with enemies nearby. 
regardless of being fed well, increasing its strength, or how much affection you shower on it, Mushups retains its inherent cowardly nature. Ok so that covers everything you need to know about the new dinos that should be here in the next few days. Moving back onto the patch notes list and what else we can expect to see. Breeding Mechanics Phase 3 is apparently going to be in this update. Last update it was supposed to get released but was unfortunately removed off of the list. As to whether it will be released this time around I am uncertain of, but let's just keep our fingers crossed. All new caves on the island, redesigned with proper shipping quality layouts and graphics and increased challenge. All cave structures will necessarily be wiped in this version, still to come beyond this and underwater caves as well as the tech cave. So guys if anybody is built in a cave on the map of the island, it is very advisable that you get out of it as quick as you can. This update is just around the corner and everything will be wiped out of the cave, it's having a complete new reskin complete new graphics overhaul in all of the caves so you have a very high chance of losing any creatures or buildings you have in there so to be on the safe side if I were you I just leave them empty for the time being until the update has been released that is. So we have two new Mythos Explorer notes for each character. This adds another two uh, new Explorer notes for each character such as Rockwell and his recipes and sort of gives you more detail into the backstory of Ark and how everything was created and how everything is what it is now. We have an extra 20% server performance increase due to massive replication and physics efficiency improvements. So that is just a massive optimization to servers, hopefully making servers a lot better off, a lot less lag and just overall better on your system. Whistle ordering groups, you can now create groups by class or specific dino, as well as following ranges for these groups. Now this is something that is very good, I've wanted something like this. So say for example, if I had a pack of, I don't know, three aloes, I could set them all to following within a specific group. So if I whistled follow, all three of them would follow me at the same time, rather than me having to whistle each individual one. The new whistle type move to point at an arbitrary location and tell your dinos to move there. Now this is something very good, I'm actually pretty glad they've added this. In terms of an explanation, imagine if you had a Bronto or a Stego and you were farming resources. You could then look at your certain location and select move to whistle. Once you whistle that move to command, that dino that you have selected, whether it be in the Stego or maybe any dino of your choice, will go to that location which is very very handy indeed. We have VFX indicators for whistle commands, move to, attack and group select units. Sort of similar to an ARC RTS, for those of you who don't know already RTS games are my favourite and the fact that it just mentioned an ARC RTS has just given me a whole bunch of ideas, I could just imagine this game as an RTS game, it would be amazing. An RTS game guys, for those who do not know, I'll give you one example. That uh, is Command and Conquer or Supreme Commander. Go check them out if you don't know what an RTS is. They are by far my most favourite games I've ever played and they will always remain that way. Okay so here we have an extra graphics option so we get to stream and farm map sub levels. So this basically means for large memory and performance gains. So this is going to give you a lot more performance taking up quite a bit of memory but it does reduce your visual quality and draw distance. It also does state that there is more notes to come. I have no idea what they are, nobody knows what they are. Things on this list could be changed or added since this video goes up. So, you know, don't quote me on anything. If you see something on the list later on and I haven't covered it, then that's because I haven't recorded it. It wasn't on the list as of the recording of this video. And some things may be removed, such as Breeding Mechanics Phase 3, because where's that will be added in this video? Oh. Whether that will be added in this update or not, I am not too sure, they do like to remove that quite a lot, so we'll just see how that goes. Alright guys, so that concludes this video, leave a comment down below on what you are most excited for and why. I really do enjoy reading your comments and I'd love to hear from you. I just want to thank you all so much for watching, if you enjoyed this video then smash that thumbs up button, and if you're new to the channel then subscribe for more Ark Survival of All content, and I'll see you all in the next video.